Hey, Jamie. You hold this one. Guys. Hey, guys. Uh, sorry, Link. Raina. Hey, hey yeah, sorry, yeah. guys. Uh, hey. hey, hey, this is uh, Pillow Talk, and uh, we're here live at the Airbnb house. Thank you, Raina. We're in your house. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we are going to be interviewing these two amazing gentlemen from 8i. They are a new virtual reality technology company, and they're helping future filmmakers tell stories in a totally new, immersive way. So let's just jump in. I mean, did I get it right, first of all? That's it. All right, awesome. So Link, first of all, you have the coolest name ever. Uh, I want to just state that flat out. And second of all, how did you come up with the name 8i? Where, where does that come from and what does it mean? It's a long story, but ultimately it comes down to the way that the technology crunches all the data uh, it takes a real life room like we're in now. Yeah. We have cameras on the outside. Yeah. And it brings it all together and turns everything that's inside the room into a hologram. And we focused on the humans because that's the hardest bit. Uh, the humans always are the hardest bit, aren't they? Always. So, <laughs> so Link, so, you know, we've got a lot of tech heads out there. There's a lot of very nerdy people who watch this particular channel. Way to go, Adobe. Hey. So what I want to know is, yeah, what's that technology stuff that's crunching? What's happening there? You can give us that info and don't, don't seriously, don't be afraid to like get too technical. Okay, so what we do is we, if you imagine walking into our studio, yeah. okay, so this is the first place where this technology is. We won't want to get it out to everybody. Right. So what we do is you walk in and you see all these cameras surrounding you all the way around the outside of the studio. Yeah. And you stand on the inside. Okay. And what those cameras do is they basically capture video from every angle. Okay. And then our software essentially takes all that data and crunches it and reconstructs it into wow. this hologram that you can then move around and walk around the person wow. after you've got the headset on. God. How long does it take to render that? I mean, that sounds like so much information. We can actually get a result. You can actually see something after about 10, 15 minutes. Come on. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's a pretty fun technology to play wow. with. That's amazing. That's amazing. So speaking of pretty fun technology to play with, let me just give you guys a little bit of background on both of these people. Uh, so Link's the founder CEO, yeah, of, of 8i. And then over here is Reina, uh, our German friend, who just happens to work on a couple of the coolest projects probably that are in existence right now, one of them being Game of Thrones. He does visual effects. He's a supervisor for the VFX stuff. Um, Reina, how did you get involved with 8i? Yeah, I think Lee called me up when I was working on, on Cosmos, a space-time odyssey, and I was right. doing visual effects on that one. And he told me that he was working with a team on this, on this cool technology that allowed for, yeah, that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. on capturing not just image, but also distance information. And I've always been waiting for that to happen because I kind of know what, what that could lead to. What amazing content, obviously, it would change visual effects quite a bit because you always want to have that information when you do visual effects but it also cr uh, could create like this futuristic content that we, we so far have only seen in, in sci-fi movies. Right. And uh, you know, now it's coming together. You know, now the tools seem to be in place to, to create content like that. I, f I feel very fortunate that I, I seem to be one, well, probably the, one of the first who can actually play with these new tools, and that's what we did here at Sundance with 100 humans. And yeah, as soon as these tools come off the pipe, I get to play with them. And I know that already while we're here, we have new tools that have been developed that I'm going to play with next week. Awesome. So let's, let's dive into that a little bit. So he brought up 100 humans. So that's their particular project that's playing here at Sundance and that got them into the VR experience, right? So 100 humans, um, it's the first 100 humans that kind of walks through the door to be a part of this particular process. Am I right in saying there's more than just humans involved as well? Did I see some monkeys in there too? Yeah, it's funny. We wanted to record some animals early on, and the monkey has become like our mascot. He's like, <laughs> he, he's like our MGM lion. Right, right. So he shows up the end of, at the credits at uh, the end of every project. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. Okay, so talk us through a little bit of how this immersive experience goes. So you've got like these different sort of playing fields, it seems like, right? So there's Wasteland, which is like the sci-fi futuristic kind of feel. Yeah. And then there's also Gladiator, which obviously you have some experience with in other projects as well. 
how did you create those environments and then how did you interact with the different sort of humans, which is the hardest part, that now exist in that virtual space? Yeah, so I mean, we wanted to show a bit of variety. We wanted to show like the features, the tools that are available right now. And in, in the wasteland, we uh, wanted to put a very realistic background together that works well with, with the way we shoot. Right. The, the and realistic humans. dystopian future. Yeah. Yeah, because we all know what that's like. Yeah, so that is a real place that we covered there. It's a real place in the desert close to Los Angeles that was able to go to and then, and then capture. Right. And then um, put that together with, with the recording that we did in our studio. And then uh, we also added some CG assets just to show how you can, how can, how you can puzzle together different pieces of technology and, and AI being the core of that. As, right. as like that that's uh, allowing us to capture the humans. But there's also like in the Gladiator, we just used um, an asset that was available on the internet, and we we, can, we modified it and and awesome. So you see that? So in the wasteland, you've got this yeah. like dystopian guy sort of crazily driving through the scene. Uh huh. And uh, so the cool thing about this is it is it's really cheap to do. Ultimately, right. like it used to cost Reiner and an experience like millions of dollars to motion capture the humans. Right. Build these CG scenes. That car was a fifteen dollar download <laughs> online from right. as a three D model. Right. A couple of days to like fix it up. I love it. So you know, I think the really amazing thing here is like this is like a teaser, right? So hundred humans, this little VR experience yeah. you guys create here, it's like just sort of an appetizer, right? Like it's a sampler for people to see. Oh, this is what I can use in my stories in the future. Yes. So if I want to create a blank kind of movie. I can do it so much cheaper, and I can use this particular, you know, let's call it what it is, a volumetric machine uh, to help create immersive, virtual, and really kind of engaging experiences. Like, that's yeah. sort of the underlying. Man, it is so rad. Will you also tell us a little bit about the personality of the Gladiator one? Because I think you guys used a talent, uh, someone that is a pretty well-known Vine guy, to help make that yeah. experience happen. As part of 100 Humans, we actually brought Logan Paul in. Oh, that guy's hilarious. And uh, you know, you probably know him from doing splits around New York or right, something like right. that. And first of all, he brought in uh, uh, his parent, uh, Maverick, <laughs> and, uh, and he expressed his love for Maverick. Right, there's lots of kissing going on. Absolutely. Yeah. And then he came back um, a little bit later on in the experience, and we had, we had kept evolving the tech. Right. And, uh, and he dressed up as a gladiator. Uh, which is amazing. He's a wrestler anyway, right? <laughs> he's, he's a wrestler. Yeah, yeah. And he's, just, he's hilarious in anything, but a gladiator just seemed to fit him perfectly. Right, right. And, uh, and he comes in, and uh, kind of on the fly, he just invents this character, uh, and then... Uh, we were able to basically take him as the hologram, as a gladiator, right. and Reiner was able to place him into this coliseum, and then you're like teleported back in time so cool. into the middle of the middle of this coliseum um, as he's waiting to fight a lion. Uh, so, and that is all done after the improv that he did in the room. So you're able to react, sort of post in real time to what he put there. That was all just imaginary. Exactly. And, oh. and because it's volumetric, right. Reiner was able to place sounds from the crowd up in the audience, the lion coming out from the, behind the door. So, Reiner, how would you put, if Logan had to face off against the mountain, who would win in that battle? And can we see <laughs> Whoever that? Whoever we want to win. Yeah. Whoever you want to have win. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll put in the mountain next time, maybe. That'd yeah. be pretty fun, right? So, do you can you see this actually being a part of those projects in the future? Oh, or, totally. Or yeah. How would it evolve those projects? Yeah. Well, people are talking about it already. They like, oh, wow, you can be immersed in in, in movies now, and but really, you, you can't do that in, in in many experiences. You can do it now with uh, with experiences that use the AI technology, but. Um, I just see more and more of that, that happening. It's going to be longer and more complex. Right. So before this came along, yeah. there, was, there was basically, um, when, the, when this company started, the, the problem was is if you're trying to tell stories, right. volumetric, if you want to actually put a headset on and then move around like, like a holodeck. Right. Then I was about to say that earlier when you were talking. I was like, uh, Star Trek is finally real. It's okay. finally here. Right. right. And so if you want to actually do that, at the time, there was only really one way of doing it, which was CG. Right. Right. So you end up motion capture, 
you end up uh, yeah. Yeah, all and that those craziness, humans right? Never look human. They never look human. Right. They're like glassy eyed. The yeah. mouth never looks right. Right. The hair is ne is very difficult. Right. Um, and so you don't really get that connection with people. Yeah, man. You know, it may, reminds me of friction based physics, right? It's like, oh yeah, here's physics, and it's easy. You can understand physics, and then they're like, yeah, but that's not friction based physics, which is like the interaction in the real world. And, and exactly. So the other option, the other option at the time was 360 spherical video. So that's right. where you put a camera instead of on the outside of the room, on the, in the middle of the room, and you're capturing from one direction. Right. Uh, even though it's 360 degrees. Right. That gives you the ability to look around, but you can't move. Right. And so what we wanted to do is do something really completely new, and that's what volumetric does. So, it's, so what? Will you explain volumetric to our lovely viewers? Yeah, sure. As, as, so, as best you can. So what volumetric is, it's just like a computer game, except it's real, so it feels real. So instead of looking at a computer game character in a kind of computer game scene, you're looking at a real photographic environment, photorealistic, right. um, and you're looking at real people that were recorded. Like, uh, the climb is the one that I sort of thought was the most like, oh wow, I'm on the ledge yeah. of a cliff, and it looks like I'm really there. So you could, since you can move in this space, you yeah. can actually walk forward, yeah. walk back, and what this cliff experience does, right. the climb, means it really shows people what volumetric does, which right. is it gives this sense of what's called presence, means that you feel like you're actually there. Yeah. Now, what's cool about the climb is that you, you uh, put the headset on, you're there, you find yourself at this, like a mile high on this cliff that Rhino created. Yeah. Uh, you're there with a the climber. That's awesome. And, uh, and you peer over the edge, and because you can move forward, you get this sense of vertigo that just makes no sense. So your logical right. brain is saying, I'm not, on a, I'm not on a cliff. Like, I'm in a headset, in a room, on complete flat ground. Right. Your emotional brain is saying, hell no, I'm gonna die, get right. me out of here. Right. Fight or flight. Exactly, right, yeah. and it's breaking your brain in a way that Oof. we've never had before, and that's what the, kind of the promise of virtual reality is. Right. so exciting to do this volumetric style. We get style. to break brains. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. And it really helps that you have another person there with you. You know, it's not like you're alone in this virtual reality environment. Now you can have Sebastian, our colleague there, he's, he's a climber and he's looking up, he's looking down, so it really helps you feel the, the height of, of the location that you're at. That's pretty amazing. So guys, I'm just going to ask you sort of my last couple of questions, if that's okay. And they're mostly around sort of creative space and how you make these sort of big leaps. So are there particular environments that you find really useful for yourself as an artist to create? Like, where do you go? How do these ideas come up for you? Yeah, I think you, you want to use an environment that really makes the most out of like having things close and further back to you, similar to what they did early in, in 3D movies. I mean, that works. So you, um, that's that's what we're, probably, what we're going to go after. We get the most out of the performances. Yeah, but okay, what I'm asking is angles. where do you personally go when you're trying to like create? Well, at the first stage is, is like testing all the tools yeah. and then going for the experiences that can be done with that. And where I want to go is like creating these, uh, these larger than life worlds from it that are still based on reality, but like the most amazing places on this planet and you make them even more amazing. Right. Okay, so do you go to those space, do you go to those amazing places in real life and get an inspiration from them? Yeah. Great. Yeah. And then what about you? So, you do. Uh, so interestingly, yeah. uh, very early on in, in the creation process of this, I actually went into virtual reality. So I threw a headset on right. and I started to draw out uh, designs to find out what it would be like to actually see them in reality. And, uh, that's and that's, awesome. I think a lot more in the future, a lot more creators are going to go into virtual space yeah. to kind of pre -vis what they want to see because your that's brain so just cool. kind of works so natively yeah. in this space. Um, you know, if you look at people buying homes off the plan, right, architecture, uh -huh. you find that a lot of people really struggle to get that two-dimensional, three-dimensional switch right. going from something flat right. into something volumetric. Right. Whereas this, you can just go straight into volumetric and go, uh, let's just uh, that's how design our naturally work. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all right, guys, we have actually a question from a live stream, so let's get the question. So, 100 humans is very much proof of concept. Yeah. Um, what learnings did you guys have, and kind of what can you kind of share with others? So the question was, 100 humans, a proof of concept, uh, how could this be applied going forward for people? Oh yeah, what learnings did you get and then how can they apply it? Yeah, well, 
obviously, you know, the way we, we shoot is a bit, it's slightly different to how you shoot uh, two-dimensional content. So right. you learn how to shoot, how you, how you have like a performance surrounded by cameras, right. and how you expand the scenes, and, and then also how you lay out the scenes, how certain performances work really good at the, uh, certain distances, and how you guide the viewer in this uh, virtual space through, you know, performers moving around. So one of the things that we learned is that in, uh, in two-dimensional space, uh, you, you sort of watch somebody, you're not with them, right? Okay. So when you're in a volumetric film or experience... Right. Um, you, like this right like now. Like this right now. I mean, now. we are like on we're, top we're, of each other. I mean, we're pretty close here. <laughs> and you, what, what is that, right? What is this closeness? Presence. That, it's presence, yeah. it's proximity. Right. And you're trying to give people personal space, right? right. You feel yeah. that they're there. And so in these experiences, as we did this, as we did the 100 humans, we found that people had this respect that they wanted to give these photographically real actors. Right, right. It's interesting. There's uh, uh, Olin, one of the psychologists who followed Freud, talked about a bubble, right? The Olin bubble. Like, it has like three feet that everyone kind of needs yeah. to have from each other as like a sort of sense of respect. And so there's some of that that exists inside of this virtual world. Yeah. So you, you've heard of the uncanny valley. It's this concept in computer-generated imagery right. where if, if you look at someone that doesn't look exactly real, it's being kind of created, you get this sort of repulsion uh -huh. unconsciously. Right. So after you leap over that valley and you do it photographically like we do with these recordings with right. 8i, you actually find this new type of mountain that happens, which is this personal space that comes along. Oh, wow. So you guys have leaped over the uncanny valley. Yeah. Oh, no big deal, everybody. Whatever. All right, so um, we're going to start wrapping up a little bit. What are some huge obstacles for you around creativity? What are things that you're like, oh, man, why, did, why does this happen? Yeah, I mean, it's still challenging. We're, we're dealing with huge amounts of data when we're, when we're recording. And right. you're, you're dealing with, um, you know, a certain capture space, so rather than framing something, you're, you're putting the performer into a, a capture volume uh, that you, c you could use trickery to expand the volume, uh, but we're dealing with limitations of capture, uh, capture space with uh, camera resolution, bandwidth, uh, hardware limitations. Right, so just the vast amount of information can yeah. often be a big stumbling block. The other one is that this is, when you watch this, if you, if you saw the waistline, you realize that this is, this is not film. This right. is like a brand new space. It's, right. a, it's a new medium. So what that means is that there's a challenge of inventing the grammar, the language of how to talk about it and then how to do it. So for example, wow. like there's, there is a, still a scene, right? You're inside this environment. Right. There's a scene, but there's no, there's no shot, right? Because you can move anywhere. Right. You're the camera. You're kind of the director. You're right. kind of the, the, the cinematographer in a way. You're taking some of those roles away from, right. from the content creators. Wow. And you think people are going to be, like, able to handle it? Yeah, I mean, it just, it does feel natural just to be able to walk around and, and choose able your to view. handle reality. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so intuitive. You put a four-year-old in, well, in a VR space, and they, they'll just move through it. They love it. So there's no fear. I mean, right, the first time that people watched the train coming into the station on a film screen, they yeah. ran out of... So, so we're getting that result out of the cliff, which is okay. a proof of concept of showing what virtual reality can do to you. Right. Some people put their headset on, they, they're incredibly afraid of heights, and they just rip it off right. like those people ran out of the train, out right. of the cinema, seeing that train coming towards them right. uh, 100 years ago. Right. Wow. All right, cool. So um, my last question is, how do you want to see future filmmakers or future storytellers using this particular equipment, technology, uh, immersive experience. What, what would your dream scenario be? It's just, I mean, you're given the ability to, to dress this virtual space now with, with, with storytelling or with other forms of entertainment. And, and I wanted to see a huge variety of that. So you just want to see a lot of different things. Yeah. And, yeah. That's, and that's really what this, this uh, exhibit at Sundance is about. It's about showing people the possibilities and then getting all of the content creators out there really inspired about what they would do with it. Yeah, I mean, how can people check this stuff out? Uh, well, it'll soon be available uh, if someone uh, signs up in, in the future for a Vive uh, from HTC or, or gets an Oculus or 
um, other virtual reality headset, they're going to be able to download this soon. Yeah. Wow. And we um, also have the portal up, so people can already download that from our webpage. Yeah, so you can already get the, the, the climb and some of the other uh, the other experiences already from our website at 8i. And so what's the website? 8i.com. 8i.com. Check the links below. All right. Awesome. Well, there you have it. We just were in bed together at Pillow Talk. Give it up for my man Link here and my man Raina. I think you guys did fantastic. I hope you feel great. Have a great Sundance.